I snorted a half ounce of cocaine with a friend in three days. This led me down a pseudo reality and created inside of me an insatiable desire for hope. My story is one of utter despair and darkness turned into light. I'm sharing this with you today because I believe that it is the most tangible proof that I have besides the word of God that God exists. I hope that you will leave this video encouraged and your faith renewed to know that God is still working miracles today just like he did in the past. My anger as a child was not like that of my friends. It was an anger that I couldn't control and the more I tried to control it, the worse it got. This anger, the way I acted out, led to holes in my walls, chairs thrown through doors, threatening physically of my parents. My anger increased so much as a young child that I threatened my mom with a bat when I was, I believe I was 12 years old at that time and she had to call the cops and the cops threatened us to send me to juvenile detention center. You may think this is crazy, but for me, this was a time that I could not control. It was something that I knew I was abnormal. I knew I wasn't right. And that led me down a road of depression and loneliness. I knew from an early age of 10 that I had these uncontrollable impulses that my friends didn't seem to have. During this time, my parents did the very best they could to seek counsel for me and counsel for themselves so that way they can be there emotionally for my brother and I. My first drinking experience was delivering to say the least. I can remember drinking taco vodka straight from the bottle and thinking, wow, I'm finally free. Finally sensing that peace and that security I sought out for so many years. That feeling of freedom is something I will never forget because in that moment I realized that chemicals is what I needed to feel free to find peace and security in my life. Now keep in mind, suicide has always been an option to me, even from a young boy, because of me feeling lonely. But when I met alcohol, it made the reality come true that I can still live on earth and be free because I was able to escape my mind and those dark thoughts that were within me. I mean, it's best case scenario, right? I get to escape my own mind and feel great. During this time, I found myself in a very toxic relationship, which was not good for me or her. This is when I realized that my anger is still prevalent and my anger is still something that I can't control. Every time I try to control my rage, it just got worse and worse and worse. Now my life is utterly consumed with relationships, despair, and alcohol. Then I met marijuana. Marijuana changed my life. I quit drinking because I believed marijuana made me feel better than drinking did. I was able to drive, I was able to speak with my friends, I was able to go out and do things and be high and escape really my mind once again and not experience the void in my mind and the void in my heart. Marijuana is all I needed, it's all I wanted. Then I took my first Xanax and Percocet just months before my first treatment center when I was 18 years old in Lafayette, Louisiana. As you can guess, I immediately fell in love. It was better than marijuana, it was better than alcohol. The pills gave me a freedom in my mind I never experienced, and so of course I kept going back and kept going back to them so I could be, feel free and feel great and not worry about the thoughts in my mind. I found myself stealing, trying to find ways to get money so I can keep my habit up. This is when I started owing people money. I started stealing things from people. I started finding myself in situations where I didn't really want to go out anymore because I didn't want to be seen. I met people higher and higher in the drug dealing business and found myself once again in places I never thought I would be. I wanted ecstasy, LSD, pills, anything I could get my hands on, I wanted to escape the reality in my mind. After the first rehab in 2007, I realized through rehab that there are more drugs out there to use and so I started to become more curious and started to say, well, if I can get high off of this and that, maybe I can get even higher off of other drugs. The summer of 2007, 2008 is pretty much a blur. I took more pills than you can count. I've driven more times in a blackout than I would like to admit, and by God's grace, I'm still alive today. I mean, I would drive on the road tripping on LSD, thinking that there were huge ants on the road. I mean, that's crazy. So crazy, and I thought it was fun at the time, but really, I was close to death. I would snort cocaine all day, take pills with the cocaine if I had it. If I didn't have pills during the day, I would try to find them at night so I can get some rest. Now I wanna take us to the moment where I met Oxy. When I met Oxycontin, my life changed again. It was better than pills. It was better than alcohol. It was better than marijuana. When I took Oxycontin, I literally had an out of body experience and it was what I've been waiting for. I remember having a revelation thinking, this is what I've always waited for. The moment where I can escape my body and feel great. I will forever seek out Oxycontin. The peace and the security I got from Oxycontin is indescribable. I can remember sitting in the back seat of a friend's car high on Oxycontin and methadone and I felt my heart stop beating. And I remember thinking to myself and saying aloud to God, God, please save me from this. Please save me from this. Please don't let me die this way. 
That was one of many times I cried out to God in desperation while high. God answered that prayer. I woke up the next day still physically addicted to pain pills, still emotionally addicted, mentally addicted to substances, and I continued to use. The relationships in my life are being torn apart. I've burned every bridge that I know. However, even in the sinking sand, there were moments that God gave me hope and peace. So let's get back to that half ounce of cocaine that my friend and I did in three days. I stayed at his apartment most of February and March in 2008. Slept on his floor when we did sleep and did anything and everything we could to buy drugs. I sold things that I had at pawn shops just to get cash to buy cocaine and pills. I reached the point where I was in utter despair. I felt like I had no soul. I felt like I had no meaning. I felt like I had no purpose. And I just remember thinking, that's it, I'm doomed. I can't control my anger. I can't control this addiction. It's consumed me to the point of, you know what, I'm just gonna stop trying. Then one night my dad kicked me out the house and it was the absolute most loving thing that my dad has ever done for me. Because in that moment I realized if I burned the bridge of my parents, I absolutely have nowhere to go. And then my mom called and I was in the bathroom sick and ill. She called to let me know that her and my dad were gonna give me one more chance. And I said, yes. That was a turning point in my life. I said, yes, give me the number. She gave me the number and I called the retreat in Wyzetta, Minnesota. And the lady that answered the phone said, are you sober? And I said, yes, absolutely. Lying through my teeth, I was high at the moment. But it was in that moment that I made a decision. I made a decision that I did not want to live this way anymore. I moved to St. Paul, Minnesota, became highly involved in Alcoholics Anonymous and stayed sober for many years. Met some amazing people there, did some amazing things in the Midwest. It was because of that tight-knit community that I was able to stay sober. And then God brought me back home in August of 2010 and I met Bobby LeCompte who invited me to church. He invited me to church and I learned some things I never knew. I learned that I can never measure up to who God is. I learned for the first time that there's only one way to God and that's through Jesus. I learned for the first time it's because of Jesus' life, death, burial, and resurrection that I can be free if I choose to entrust myself to Him and make Him Lord of my life. That involved me surrendering my whole life to Jesus, and I made that decision February 23rd, 2011 at 7.33 p.m. at the Southland Mall parking lot. I remember that night so vividly because I got in a fight with this girl I was dating, and we broke up. And I found myself in the parking lot thinking, just another failed relationship, just another failure by Chet. Way to go, right? I was still sober. I stayed sober since 2008. It's been, it's been 12 years now that I've been sober, about to be 13. And I remember thinking, I, I just can't do this anymore. I can't do this. So I said, I cried out to God. I said, God, if you're real, if the gospel's real, I give you my whole life right now. I, I entrust it all to you. I'm done. I give up. You can have it. And in that moment, I remember sensing a transformation in my life. And it was so powerful because immediately he said, you're going to preach. And I'm like, what? I'm gonna preach? I saw Brother Steve do it, it's kinda cool, but I mean, Lord, you're talking about someone who literally can't speak complete sentences because of my grammar. I don't understand English. Um, when I talk, it's got a Cajun slur. How, how can I communicate God's word to other people? And I envision myself speaking in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Now, you may think that's prideful or boastful or whatever. I'm just telling you the truth. I don't understand that. That's what God showed me. And to be honest, the rest of my story, Walking with Jesus has been filled with victory and filled with failure. My life isn't perfect now, just like it wasn't perfect then, but the one who lives in me is perfect. God has given me a new life, a new mission, and that mission and that new life is to share this with other people and to encourage other people to share their story so that other people can hear the story of Jesus and the power of the gospel and know that they can be saved through entrusting their lives to Jesus Christ. And of course, God gave me the desires of my heart. He gave me a wife, he gave me children. I've always wanted a family, but never think, thought I can get one because of my life. This is why I started the challenge on Facebook. The challenge is to share with other people through video how Jesus changed your life. Tag me, hashtag Jesus for real, and share it. Let's flood the muddy, opinionated media waves with the real message of transformation, with the real message of power, and the real encounters with the real God. I'll link the Facebook post below so you can see that and, and I challenge you, I encourage you to embrace it and be part of this. So what's your story? Comment below. Let me know that you're joining in. Show me that you're being part of this hashtag. We, we can start something here that, that's truly transformative for other people. If we truly believe in the gospel message and we believe that we have been transformed and we believe that scripture tells us to go and make disciples, the way we make disciples is we share how we became a disciple. And so I exhort you, I encourage you to do this. Um, nearly beg you because God's people need to step out into that light and share. Not just fancy scripture posts or anything like that. I'm talking about videos. I'm talking about videos of how God literally changed your life. 
how God grabbed you out of the darkness and set you into light. And if you have any questions about that, check out these videos right here where I will show you what heaven is, what hell is, how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven, and also some encouraging video there about fear. Maybe you're fearful during this time. I, I try to answer the question, why are you so fearful, and, and give a biblical perspective on it. I hope this video brought you hope and value. So until next time.